If you had problems with math in school, maybe they weren't teaching you the right way. Today, I'll teach you some basic math visually, and Latin letters and numbers will finally make sense to you. I promise. Let's start with this one. Do you remember this basic equation, a plus b squared? It's equal to a squared plus 2 times a multiplied by b plus b squared. We learned it as a rule and accepted that it's true, but now I'll make you see that it's indeed correct. Let's have a square with a side, a plus b. That's the left part of the formula, right? One side is a plus b, and the other side is a plus b. So, the space of the square is a plus b squared. Now let's break the square into four pieces like this. There's a square with a side of a in the space of a squared, and another one with a side of b in the space of b squared. In addition, two rectangles are formed with a side a and a side b. So, their space is a by b. This is exactly the right side of the formula. So, now you can see that these spaces are exactly equal. Now let's have a visualization of a similar formula, but with a minus. a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2 by a by b plus b squared. We'll start with a square with a side a, so the area of the square is, without a doubt, a squared. Then, since we have the subtraction on the left side of the formula, we need to make the side smaller by b. So, we divide it like this, with this side being equal to b. Now, this square right here has a side of a minus b, and its area is a minus b squared, which is the left side of the equation here. Now we need to track how we get it. We start with the big a squared square. Then we subtract this rectangle whose area is equal to a times b. We still don't have the square we need, so we need to subtract the area of the other a times b rectangle here. But it's now missing a piece. So, before we can do that, we need to add the b squared. Yes, and now we subtract another a b rectangle. So, as you see, now we got the area of a minus b squared, just like the formula tells us. One of the most famous theorems of geometry is the theorem of Pythagoras, which states that, for a right triangle, the square of one side plus the square of the other side is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, let's prove that it's right for any right triangle, but of course, we're gonna do it visually. So, here's our right triangle. Let's denote its sides as a, b, and c. Now, let's duplicate the triangle and make three more that are exactly like the original one. I'll arrange them this way. They're now forming two additional shapes, this one around and this one in the middle. You guessed it right, both of these are squares. But how do we know that? Let's start with the big one. First, it has four right angles, which makes it some kind of a rectangle. To be a square, all four sides must be equal. And, indeed, they are. Look, this is the side A of a triangle, and right next to it, there's another triangle with the side equal to B. So, the side of this big figure is A plus B, right? Now, this is another A, and this is another B. So, this side is A plus B too. Off to the third side, since it's the exact same triangle, then this is A. The fourth triangle is the same too and this part is equal to b. The fourth side is equal to a plus b as well. Now, we established that the big figure is a square with a side of a plus b. So, the area inside it is a plus b squared. But what about the other shape, the one that's inside? As you remember, this one is c from the original triangle, but the other triangles are the same. So, all four sides of the shape are equal to c, so it's another square with an area of, you guessed it, c squared. Okay, we remember it. In fact, let's make a duplicate of that square and put it aside for a little bit. Now let's rearrange the triangle like this. You see, now there are three squares formed. There's this one. This side is b, and this side is b too. So, it's a square with an area of b squared. And there's another one. This is side a, and this is side a. So, it's a square with an area a squared. Now, all together, they form a bigger shape. Once again, it's a square. And one we already know, a square with a side of a plus b in the area 
of a plus b squared. Okay, so do you see where I'm driving at? We had this a plus b squared square that was filled with four triangles and one c squared square. Now, I have the same a plus b squared square with the same four triangles, but two smaller squares, a squared and b squared. So, it seems like c squared is the same area as a squared plus b squared, and this is exactly our proof. This is just one of over 300 proofs this theorem has so far. Maybe you can come up with some other one. Now, we all know the formula for the area of a circle. It's the squared radius multiplied by the mysterious number pi. Now, it's time to show you the visual proof of it. Let's draw a circle, and we want to figure out what its area is. We divide it into several equal parts, let's say into eight parts, for starters. We can arrange these eight parts into a rectangle-like shape. Still, this doesn't help us much to figure out the area. Let's divide it into 16 pieces then, and once again, rearrange them trying to form a rectangle. Now, it's already closer, but still not enough. We make more pieces, and they turn smaller. It's 24 now, and the rectangle is more distinctive now. Do you see what I'm getting at? The more pieces we divide the circle into, and the smaller they are, the closer they are to being a perfect rectangle when we rearrange them. The smaller the pieces, the closer it gets. Look at this one now. Divide, rearrange. Looks good enough, huh? So, now we need to find the area of the rectangle, and it'll be the area of the circle too. This smaller side right here, the height, is the size of the radius. The other side, or the base, is equal to half of the circumference of the circle. And the circumference is 2 pi r, so the base is just pi r. So, now we see that the area of the rectangle and the area of the circle is r times pi r, or pi r squared 2. Now let me clarify just one thing, the length of the circumference and how pi comes into play. Let's have three circles, with the diameters of 1, 2, and 3. Well, the radius of each will be half the diameter, of course. Here we take the first circle. The radius is 0.5, and the diameter is 1. If we roll it on the ruler, the length is approximately 3.14. Now let's take the next circle. The diameter is 2, the radius is 1, we roll it, and the length is approximately 6.28, which is 3.14 multiplied by 2. The last circle, with the diameter of 3 and the radius of 1.5. You know the drill, we roll it and measure. The length is now approximately 9.42, or 3.14 multiplied by 3. This mysterious number got called pi. In fancy words, it's the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And as you've seen, it's always the same. So, that's it for today, and I hope I made math a bit more understandable for you. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.